coming in third on the list, we have Batman. Mm -hmm. Frank. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> you are the expert on Batman here right now. The more than the expert. Who would you, who was your favorite Batman? Who is your favorite person that has played Batman? Batman really is 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 an impossibly versatile character. The the uh, you can't break him. I mean, it's it's there've been versions of him cast again and again across decades, and they all work. Of the um, TV and screen versions, I can't really fault any of them. Mm -hmm. um, the, so Kilmer. You're telling me Kil Kilmer is probably your favorite <laughs> then, right? No, uh, <laughs> but but I like Nolan's a great deal. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I was I was raised on that up, raised on that clunky old Adam West show. And at the time, that was a brilliant version. I have, I don't go out of my way to watch it now. <laughs> but but the uh, but the the uh, I, I've watched the various screen versions of it. And none of them have, have, they've only been bad if the movie itself has been bad. Mm -hmm. there, there hasn't been an interpretation of it where I've said this is, this is a, a terrible version of Batman. Because as long as he's, he's not a bad guy, and as long as he's, I mean, he, need, he needs a, a couple of things to make him work. I mean, he, he needs the big cave. And we gotta be reminded him that he's the one guy of all these superheroes who needs a car. <laughs> what was your what was your inspiration for the Dark Knight Returns? <clears throat> it's very simple. Uh, I was approaching the age of thirty. I was terrified of it, so I had to make Batman older than me because he had been eternally twenty nine. <laughs> Beyond that, I uh, I uh, uh, was approached by DC Comics to 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 um, do a new interpretation of Batman and and. Uh, they, it was it was like getting the keys to the golden kingdom. They they gave me a, a, a tremendous amount of latitude on what I could do. So I got to play with all these wonderful old um, toys, but reinterpret them in different ways and update them because the the character hadn't been updated since the 1960s. So so there was there was a lot of room. I found that all these old toys worked. All the old villains worked, but they they need, needed more than cosmetic surgery. A lot of them needed new spines. How would you define those spines? Just that uh, I, I had to make you scared of the Joker again. Mm -hmm. He turned into a funny guy in a clown suit, mm -hmm. and I and I had to make him the a serial killer, mm -hmm. someone who was, whose laughter would, would scare the crap out of you instead of instead of um, making making think that he was just a buffoon. You're currently at work on uh, the Dark Knight Three: The Master Race. What can mm -hmm. fans expect from that? It's it's a further exploration of, of, of all of the same material, and and uh, and the ongoing um, <laughs> the ongoing sort of a torturous friendship between Superman and Batman, and you can certainly count on carrying on the Dark Knight trademark of at least one time in which in which Batman beats the snot out of Superman. Finally, <laughs> let's get there. Every single Dark Knight's a guarantee. I think the Dark Knight really took it there. I mean, it was it was um, gritty, it was dark, it it was intense, and I think that other adaptions that came, you know, after that, whether directly or indirectly, they were inspired and influenced by that. Mm -hmm. um, Luke Cage being one of them. We go there, we're gritty, you know, it's dark, but in our own way. But I definitely think that we were influenced by that. You know. Sean, do you have a favorite Batman story? Well, the Killing Joke. Well, the Dark Knight, the graphic novel is, uh, and the Dark Knight Returns is uh, incredible. The Killing Joke is fantastic. Um, I think those are my top two, probably.